To a lot of us, pro players are sort of like these mythical beings. We watch their streams, we watch their highlights, and we see them pop off on the regular. Every move they make seems flawless, but they're humans too. So what about their mistakes? How's it going guys? It's Kristoff here. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at when pro players go wrong. We'll be showing you a couple of disastrous clips from two lesser known players at the DreamHack Finals. And along the way, I want you guys to spot any mistakes that you guys can, then we'll discuss them, and by the end, you should have some great knowledge for you guys to help avoid making these mistakes yourself. And as always, today's question of the day is pretty simple. All I wanna know is how are you guys enjoying season two? Do you think it's better than the last one? What changes do you want made? Let us know in the comments down below. All right, guys, let's get into the video. So over 1,000 players attended DreamHack Anaheim, including myself, and after a grueling set of matches, the top 100 contenders earned their spot in the finals. One of these players was Sparebow. If you watched one of the many viewing parties, you might have noticed him. He was the kid vibing out. Legit, he had music blasting in his ears mid-match. He was singing along and everything. It was very funny to watch. But maybe he could have done without the distractions because unfortunately, Sparebo finished near the bottom in like 82nd place. He had a couple of okay games, but the rest was him pretty much dying off spawn. So let's take a look at his first game and just try and figure out what went wrong. Okay, here Sparebo lands at Misty Meadows, accompanied by a couple of opponents. His drop is actually pretty top-notch here. It's right on a gray rifle, and using it, he scares a player off right away. Instead of chasing into who knows what, he does the right thing and continues his loot route, managing to find a big pot and a tack shotgun. That's when he makes the decision to push. Shields and a shotgun are the two things you want in the early game, and since he got them right off the bat, he's taking advantage of his situation. His opponent likely won't have the same, I say likely because it's not guaranteed or anything, but if he can capitalize on that difference in loot, he could potentially pick up a free kill. All right, so Sparebow's hungry for blood, and here's someone in this building making a ruckus. This is when things start to turn for the worse. Sparebow goes for the floor replace, manages to get it, but doesn't see anything, so he goes for another one. This time, his opponent was ready. They take the floor and quickly edit into a pump shot. Sparebow shoots his tack to try and retake the piece, but can't snatch it. Then, all it takes is another couple of edits to bring Sparebow down. All right, guys, we noticed a few mistakes here, so rewatch the clip, rewind if you need to, and try to spot what he could have done for a better result. Okay, so here's the biggest mistake that jumped out at us. Once Sparebow noticed that the floor wasn't his, he should have immediately placed a wall for cover. It's just such a standard move if you want to counter the floor edit. At this level of play, it should be instinct, but he doesn't attempt to place a wall at all. Even after he gets shot, which is a little bit strange. His killer here, Rex, actually puts their own wall down for peace control. Why? Because they're expecting Sparebow to place one. These high level fights are rarely won with pure aggression. It's got to be slow, methodical, every piece matters. And in this case, a lack of control led to Sparebow taking some massive damage. The second mistake isn't that easy to spot though, but it has to do with Sparebow's approach. He needed to be a little bit less predictable. Rex knew to simply hold turbo build when he saw that floor being pummeled. Had Sparebow swapped up which piece he was hitting, Rex wouldn't know which one to hold. Remember, if you hit the harvesting circle, your pickaxe swings hit for 150. So if he alternated between two floors and got them down to 100 health, with the harvesting circle still up, he could have one shot either of those floors, leaving Rex to guess which one he has to hold. Okay guys, what about a third mistake? After Sparebow got shot, why didn't he run? I mean, the door was right there. I'm not saying he could have lived or anything, but always know where your exit points are, guys. Whether that's a wall or floor you can edit out of, or in this case, a door that you could just swing wide open and walk out of. I think here Sparebow was probably betting on Rex being around 70 health from that one shot he got off the rip, but Rex had all the pieces here. He controlled the fight. Even if Sparebow was committing to the Elim, he should have still repositioned. 
Okay guys, and the fourth and final mistake here, it's a big picture decision and I don't think Sparebow really thought about it. If you recall, he saw two other players land with him at Misty Meadows, so unless you're super confident, never ever take a fight when there's potential for a third party, because you don't know how that fight is going to turn out. Perhaps you do win it with 200 health. It's unlikely, but maybe you do. Or maybe you win it barely hanging on by a thread. Whatever happens, that third player is going to be hunting you. So in these early game scenarios, try to be the one that third parties if you want to come out on top. Sparebow didn't do that hot in this game, but what he did do after is a sign of a real pro. He put all the blame on himself. He admitted he made some wrong moves and went straight to the replay analysis to analyze his mistakes. Being able to admit fault is just part of how you guys get better, and it's something all of us need to do if we want to grow. Analyzing replays can be a bit boring, though. If you guys want a pro player to analyze your replay for you, go to ProGuides.com and find yourself your pro coach. They will actually analyze everything that you're doing in your games, so it just makes the whole process a lot easier. Moving on now, we're going to take a look at Diego GB. The Spanish player proved to be one of the best solos on Earth when he qualified for the World Cup in the first week. And since then, he's also worked his way up to the DreamHack Finals, but sadly only managed to finish 63rd. So let's see what he could have done better. We're in Diego's second match here, and as you can tell, he's off to a solid start. This yellow steel bridge landing spot is pretty uncontested, and despite the low amount of loot, he's found a rifle, shotgun, SMG, and even a bandage bazooka. Not too bad, Diego. As he continues looting, he does get sniped at. Fortunately, it whiffs, but he still gets tagged up a little bit. So he makes the right play and puts up a bunch of walls for cover, then opens the chest in the cabin for some minis. A little drink and he's got some shields now. He tops himself off with the bandage gun too, but he decides to leave it behind and carry the mini instead. With the first zone revealed, Diego's gonna be working his way into the circle. I'm not sure if he's going to the center for a better position or if he's just completing his loot route. But either way, he's planning ahead for his rotations by moving inward. Then he lets off a few shots. He gets a tag, but it's nothing substantial, so on with the rotation. That's when he sees this player at Modern House ramp out and with some pristine tracking, he gets them all the way down to one HP. Now it's build battle time. As Diego gains height, he does a fantastic job protecting himself with cones and floors because it's not about speed in this case. Instead, it's more important to make sure you don't get tagged on the way up. And with some quick maneuvering, Diego ends up on top. He's got this one in the bag, but hold up a sec because suddenly all the bills come tumbling down. Diego's quick enough to catch himself at the ramp, still he loses a huge chunk of health. And not only that, someone yoinked his kill. Man, Diego, he can't catch a break. Anyway, he goes to check out where those shots came from and there he is. That dude in the water is the culprit. Shots get traded, but this guy's building a lot of cover, so rather than stick around, Diego disengages, which is a really, really smart move. But as Diego moves up the hill to farm some trees, he gets beamed out of nowhere. So he's at 4 HP with a single mini to his name, and he can't even get it off. His opponent puts enough pressure down to cancel the heal, and before Diego knows it, it is over. So, my friends, thinking all the way back to when Diego first took the damage, the fight he got into, and what he did afterwards, I want you guys to try and figure out what did he do wrong. Take a minute, go over the footage again if you need to, and when you're ready, we will proceed. Okay, so the first mistake that he made, in our opinion at least, was dropping the bandage bazooka. Remember, he abandoned it for a single mini shield. That only heals for 25. The bandage gun can recover 75 HP in a single go, even more if you let it recharge. Heck, he could have dropped the SMG and just gone with a two-gun loadout. That would have been better too. To us, the mistake was as clear as day. He should have kept the bandage gun. This one is a little bit about preference, so let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, but we still stand by our decision. His second mistake was committing to the build battle. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with build battling, but if it's possible, you want to avoid taking them. Build battles are the kings of drawing unwanted attention. It's just screaming to everyone, hey, we're right here, come third party us, and that is exactly what happened. 
At one point, there was a single wooden ramp holding his opponent up. As soon as Diego saw that, he should have swapped focus and just destroyed it. I mean, he was at one health. Diego's opponent might have caught themselves, but even then, there weren't a whole lot of builds. He could have kept knocking them down, no problem. Really, anything would have been better than taking that build fight. Mistake number three, Diego didn't bail when the third party began knocking him down. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, but when your structures get shot at, it makes a unique noise. Sort of like a muffled sound of bullets pelting your wall. But yeah, there was like three seconds of that noise and he ignored it. If he paid closer attention and dropped down to avoid fall damage, he wouldn't have lost half his health. And mistake number four, Diego took his sights off his opponent. The decision to disengage at the end, that was beautiful. But to run away and then start farming a tree, well, that's what got him killed. I know this is hard to think about in game, but that guy that knocked him down could see the damage he dealt. It showed up on their screen, a big white 50, so they know Diego was low. And when Diego went to check things out, he saw them building toward him. At that point, Diego needed to be hyper vigilant. He shouldn't have ever let his sights off that player, but he did, and it proved to be his demise. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I just want to say that there was no disrespect meant to either of the pros we showcased. After all, these were their lowlights, the moments where they didn't shine, but obviously they have tons of highlights as well. They're still fantastic players or they wouldn't have been qualifying for major tournaments. Regardless, I hope you guys learned a thing or two. If you did, then please leave the video a like for more educational content like this. Consider subscribing to the channel. And if you guys want to get better at Fortnite, make sure to go to ProGuides.com and find a pro coach right now. That's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, it's been Kristoff, and good luck in your next few games.